僕から逆にちょっと低 C チームにいつもやってる質問があるんですよいろんな人に聞いてるでそれで僕は噂に聞いたところによると彼は幽霊が見えるらしいんですよあなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか知らないです。あなたは何をしているのか Have you guys out there seen ghosts? Don't be shy. You got to raise it up, bro. If you've seen a ghost, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's, okay. it's all right. It's all right. My man closed his eyes. He ain't, wanna see, he ain't even want to see the other people who saw ghosts. You don't want to engage them, you know? <laughs> He's quite surprised. There's a lot of people here, right? Wow. Okay. So, but in the fight, you're tasty. You're tasty. You're tasty. You're tasty. You're tasty. You're tasty. He said, You know, you get a bit crazy when you're playing and you sometimes fall over. Did you perhaps hit your head and maybe that has something to do with it? Possibly. I look, I've had a lot of injuries from being excited and falling into stuff and just being way too active. So maybe something's loose in there and it gives me the projection of ghosts now. I don't know. 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 えー、なんかモニターとかヘッドセットとか壊れたりしないのか、so、もしくはそ,のそういう壊れないギアとかにこだわってるのかっていうのを聞きたい。So we know how active you are, Steve,、uh, when you're playing, and、uh, when you're at home using headphones, monitors, etc. Is, is there something, some kind of precaution you take to make sure you don't bust your equipment? Or? So I'm gonna tell you right now, and the person, my roommate, is here somewhere. You can ask him. I've literally broken microphones. Like the arms. I was like, oh my God. And it literally, it, it broke. I had like the, the amount of things I've actually broken in my house that are tech based is actually crazy. I've knocked monitors down. I've broken my friends' monitors. And I definitely have had to replace my mic at least three times because I get excited and smack and it's, it's kind of crazy. I hope you buy the tech insurance for all your stuff. That's all this. No, I don't buy insurance. I'm too broke for that, bro. I don't, nobody has insurance. In real, you should all have insurance. But I don't have insurance on my tech.、Item. That's why we have to do this. I need to make sure I get more items. I'm coming here to petition myself after breaking the items to get more items. That's what's happening. You're living the, you're living the martial law lifestyle, huh? Not a gaming gear no sponsor to what's it? You don't have a sponsor for that gear in case. I look, Sony is here. We need to. I need to talk to the Sony people. I heard they got、oh. some really cool monitors. I'm already using the headsets. I'm glad you said that. You just gave me an idea. I need to talk to Sony about this bad boy. これ言った方がいいよね。言ったらもらえると思うよ。He said, yeah, you should. You could probably get some. I'm trying. Look, we need these Evo monitors anyway. I'm trying to get my optimum gaming ability, okay? Preach. <laughs> Preach. That's exactly right. <laughs> あとはじゃあ、そのテイシー、今。俺とかマイケル以上に世界中回って MC やってるでしょ。So you know Harad and I travel a lot around the country, but you probably travel even more than us to many different places, right? I do travel a lot. He was on my plane coming to Evo. We flew <laughs> in through <laughs> SFO. <laughs> いやだけど俺はテイスティとはアメリカで会うよりもアメリカ以外の国で会うことの方が多いの。
But he's saying uh, he's seen you more in other countries than actually being here together in the U.S., right? <laughs> That's actually true. I, I was telling people that, like, even in commentary, me and Rip, we, ha we hadn't commentated on American soil for Tekken in maybe like a year, even though we live here. So it's like I do travel a lot, and I tell a lot of the players, I tell these guys, I'm like, you know, I see you guys more than I see my family. Like, it's crazy. My mom was like, I saw you in another picture with the guy from Tekken again. What about me? I'm like, look, when you Dude, come to Argentina, family, you know what I'm saying? We can take a picture together, Dad, you know? And you, of course we're family. Look, Harada has shaken me. I have shaken Harada. I've shaken these guys. They know. I definitely consider them family. And definitely, I'm going to tell y'all right now, as close as I get to games, and I'm very much a fighting gamer, this is definitely two of the coolest people that I associate with that make games. And it makes a lot of sense considering how much I love the things that they work on. So it's a, it's, it's a very, very, very cool thing. I appreciate that, man. You know you're my favorite commentator, right? <laughs> Don't say that. There's a lot of commentators around here. There's a lot of commentators around. Rip's going to fall from the ceiling. Spag is going to run over. Like, what'd you say, man? What'd you say? No, I'm just kidding. I was like, shake their arm off, right? Just shake. There you go. There you go. This is not a lot of people who don't know me, but I don't know what to do with the commentator. I don't know what to do with the commentator. I don't know what to do with the commentator. So, is this your main gig? Is you got other stuff you do? I mean, in all honesty, like, my main thing that keeps me alive is video game commentary. Like, that's what I do now for a living. I don't, my nine to five is video games. So when I say I'm playing the game and people call me like, bro, you ain't doing nothing to play in the game. I'm like, I'm working. That is work. <laughs> every time I drop a combo, every time I get mad, that is work, you know? Um, but yes, this is my main thing now. And I, I've started doing like smaller events outside of it where it's like hosting. Uh, as well as not only for like video games, but like other stuff. I really am into music. I'm a big music guy, if you guys don't know. So if I get the opportunity, I go to a lot of music shows um, and I want to be able to host music shows. I want to be on the red carpet. I want to talk to, you know, the Marvel movie guys. Like I love that kind of stuff. So video gaming and fighting games, commentary is my main job but I do want to do a couple other things and I've been slowly going outside of it a little bit fighting games always my love but I want to make sure that people see all these cool things that I'm interested in not just fighting games makes sense so so he's, he's saying, which came first? Did you become a commentator and then talk a whole lot? Or did you talk a whole lot and then you became a commentator? So it's crazy. I was actually kind of just telling this story. But when I used to be at home or at my friend's house, they would have these mate, these huge hookups. It'd be like five, ten people, right? And they would play. And I would literally just stay. Like, if you guys are playing, I would stand behind them. No mic or nothing. I'd be like, uh-oh. Like, and it, it was, so it was natural. Like, it was a natural thing. There's a few videos still out there of that happening. But one of the things that we talk about a lot, my friends are like, bro, you started commentating in my living room, actually. <laughs> like, I literally started in living rooms and basements. And long before I knew there was a camera on, long before I knew that there was anything. And you know this. I used to commentate literally for at least four or five years for free there was no money involved it was literally just like hey steve you want to talk about a game i was like i was going to talk about it anyway let's go you know so it that's typically how it works you're not married are you i am not married i am uh, not no, married you yeah, sound but, uh, like my dad right now i am not yeah. married i'm not married dad vibes right <laughs> So Rod is saying, you know, eventually maybe you'll have a family of your own one day with kids. Uh, his kids actually think he's some kind of a YouTuber or something. Uh, <laughs> when you do have kids, what are you going to tell them your job is? What is? I'm going to tell them that I talk for a living. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm like. I talk for a living. I mean, I like to tell people that I play video games, but it's the craziest thing ever. They be like, I'm like in these crazy instances, and they're like, Yeah, I'm an IT professional, and I work on jets, and I'm like, I play video games for a living, <laughs> and I don't know how to, uh, I don't even know how to tell you that without sounding stupid. But I love it, you know. Like it's, it's pretty cool to even like be in the space to even like talk about it in a sense, and I'm very proud of it. Like I tell people all the time, I say I talk for a living. But that talking for a living is like 
something that I do is all passion. Like, there's no gain to it other than making sure that the people listening enjoy as much as I enjoy. Of course, that's love, that's love, that's love, that's love. あとちょっと聞きたいのは、まあ、俺とマイケルはゲームを、ね、作ってる側なんだけどその MC をやってる人の観点、まあ、MC というかストリーミングとかもや,やってる人いるでしょ実況自分のプレイしながら MC や,りやってるとか大会の MC やってるとか、まあ、いろんな MC の形があると思うんだけどそういう人たちから見た時のゲームに欲しい機能欲しいファンクションみたいなのって何かある So,、uh, you know, obviously we both make video games.、Uh, like professionals, like the professionals you are, like the professionals you are. <laughs> I don't work on jets, but you know, we, we make video games.、Um, you probably have a different perspective when you look at a video game than we do.、Uh, you, you do emceeing, you also, I'm pretty sure you stream from your house while playing video games. What kind of features do you wish were in a video game when you see one? Oh, wow, that's a crazy, that's a really good question.、Um, I know that a lot of people, and just, I, I, I might go on a mini rant here, just tap me if I'm talking too long. So, I know a lot of people are really excited about a lot of these new, newer fighting games, right? Project L is right over there, Tekken 8 is coming out, that soundtrack is crazy.、Um, Street Fighter 6 is there already. But、um, I'm more interested in how they change the infrastructure of fighting games. Because for years, and I've been playing fighting games competitively since I was 15 years old, like they've had the Madden effect, right? Where it's just like, Versus arcade training mood mode options, and that's it. And one of the things that I was really excited about was to see that fighting games got more in depth. Like, even though it is just training mode, showing us the frames, giving us sample combos, and stuff like that to give people an intro into like playing these games and getting better. Because for the longest time, as somebody who literally before there was YouTube, you, you just had to do it until you got it right, or someone else had to tell you about it. So, features like that, as well as like having like thought out rank modes, having that rank go. Into like a bigger tournament and just building its own infrastructure and having like compatibility work as well, having like cool features as in single player options, tech and force mode, tech and ball mode, tech and ball like stuff like that really does add to the package. And now we've seen so many games do that to a degree. And Tekken is one of the first fighting games that gave us those kind of the Tekken mode where it was like the final fight out. Like it was the first one. Came、so、during the load screen too. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh man, Galaga in the load screen. My dad used to play that. When I started up Tekken back in the day, it, it had a mini, a Galaga mini game. So before it would start, my dad would see me skip it. He was like, oh, no, 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 don't skip that. And he would go and play it. <laughs> right? Like that's, that's how deep it goes. Even to the point where you can get like the Devil Kazi or Galaga playing. That's how old I am. I remember this. If you go back and play it, you can get like, de- like a Kazia Devil as the Galaga plane on the mini games for some of the Tekken games before they start. So, but yeah, so lots of features, lots of cool things for the people training, for the people watching, for the solo play, as well as just making it more interactive. So, stuff like that. I love the infrastructure and how you guys are like changing it and giving new life to it. I don't know. I know. That's deep, man. Just a little bit of a question. ここにいる人からちょっと募ろうと思ってるんだけど。So, uh, he You got the shirt on, don't ask me. You just, you, you got the shirt on?、Yeah. Show them what the shirt says. There you go. Don't make me show the shirt. Don't make, the shirt me sh- don't make me tap the shirt, okay? okay. Thank you, guys. What's your name? Jay. Yo, guys, make some noise for Jay out there, man. Does anybody else have any questions? My man right here, he looks like a scientist with the hair. I wanted to ask you、uh, how, besides, like,、uh, you know, Playing the,、uh, like, lo- your dad playing loading stream and stuff like that. What are some of your like, best early memories of fighting games, like competing and stuff like that? So, that's a really good question. What are some of my earliest stories?、Um, I just recently told this, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I remember what kind of like gave me the inkling to try fighting games at a competitive level. So, my uncle Chad, everybody has an uncle, I feel like they kind of introduced them to like something competitive, whether it be like sports or anything. My uncle Chad came over one time, and we were playing Mortal Kombat 
And in Mortal Kombat 1, they had small tricks where you can do stuff fatality-wise before the time ended. But I remember this specifically. He had Sub-Zero. He beat the crap out of me. One. Two, it was like finish him. And he did a throw before he did the fatality. So he did back throw, and then he did the Sub-Zero rip off the head fatality. And my jaw was on the floor. I'm like, you did the throw, and then the fate? What is happening right now? And I was like, yo, how did you do that? And he gave me one of the most fighting game historic answers of all time. I don't know. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? And ever since then, I was like, I need to know. And I did the same thing. I was like, my little cousins, they would be like, yo, Steve, how did you do that? I'd be like, I did, did it by itself. I don't even know. So I have a lot of stories like that. But that is probably one of my most fondest fighting game stories. It's really what got me into the competitive side of uh, fighting games. Well, uh, thank you for staying in the community and being a pillar in it. You know, just, you know, doing, yo, your, that's doing love. your thing. That's love. So <laughs> with, with Tekken 8 coming out on the horizon, would you go back into um, playing competitive, like doing tournaments or whatnot? So the thing is, is that like, I never stopped competing. Like, it's okay. not like I, I, I actively said that I'm retired. It's just more that like when I do events now, like there's so much work and everybody already has a hard enough time getting in contact with me. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want to add to that by playing games. Like the last time, I think it was EVO 2018, 2019, I can't remember. I did really well. I made it out of pools on winter side in Tekken. Like I was smoking cats. It was crazy. And I was feeling good. And then it was like, hey, Steve, we need you for commentary. And I couldn't go to any other matches outside of that. So when Tekken 8 comes out, my plan is hopefully we do the ICFCs because, you know, we got the weekly tournaments. And if I ever get the opportunity, I will always enter. I will always enter if I have that time. But it's more about like making sure when y'all come and when y'all people are watching at home, I wanna make sure that that's enjoyable too. So I put my fighting game dreams aside competitively <laughs> to make sure that the show goes on, you know? Hey, that's what's up, man. And my second question is, with um, the older, you know, fighting games who like, you know, done their, you know, time and whatnot, what older fighting games would you like to see? Cause I personally like to see Bloody Roar come back. Yo, Bloody Roar. Uh, Gato, the lion. <laughs> Stun the insect, Jenny the bat. Like that's how much yeah. I play those games. Like so, you you're preaching to the choir right now. You know what game I want to make a resurgence? And I literally just saw one of the main guys that are involved with this game say something about it on Twitter. Virtual Fighter. I want Virtual Fighter. I I am a Virtual Fighter lover at heart, and I know Harada San is too. Like hearing him talk about it, you guys should really. And I'm saying this because it was really good. The Harada's bar of him talking about Virtual Fighter and what it does to Tekken and how it influences Tekken, it is probably one of the dopest things I've ever watched. Um, you guys should check it out on Harada's bar. Um, but um, what was the question again? I'm sorry, I went to the plug mode. What was the question? I'm sorry. It was what other? You what said order? Fighter. Oh yeah, 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 Virtual Fighter, 100 percent Virtual Fighter. Um, I, and I feel, and also I feel like this goes back to the question that you were talking about about features that are in games. And a lot of people don't remember this, but I remember I didn't have a PSP because I was way too broke. Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection, where they had the Ghost mode, and you can literally play the homies Ghost, and it was really high level. You can download it, stuff like that. But even more so, back to Virtual Fighter, Virtual Fighter 4 Evo, and I'm talking a lot, guys. I'm sorry. Virtual Fighter 4 Evo had probably the greatest training mode of all time. Like I still don't know a training mode that touches that. But the the solo player of that is, you literally could go to the arcades around Japan, which were real arcades, and you could play all the Ghost of real players like Chibita. Fudo, and they had their ghost in the game. So, and the thing is, it was synced with your PlayStation 2 time clock. So you would have to log on at like 2 p.m. to go play in a tournament so you can fight the ghost. It's amazing. It's just so you can fight the ghost of the best players in the world. And it literally, I have not played another fighting game that has given me that. I know there's been a lot of advancements in training mode, but Virtual Fighter 4 Evo, shout out to my boy Kamenari Oyaji because he's the one who told me about it. He's a big Virtual Fighter 4 guy and Virtual Fighter guy in general. He's the one who put me on. I'm like, bro, I can't believe that no other game has even done anything close to this afterwards. So if y'all bring back the ghost mode, you guys should do that. Yeah, man, but it's amazing though. But yo, thanks, man. I'm gonna be, I got you up and just stand and answer questions, bro. What's your name again? My name is um, Kendra Hip. I go by King Ray's. Yo, can y'all make some noise for King Ray, bro? Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. I don't know how much time we got, but yeah. One more, one more question. One more question. What? Oh. One more question. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm a Smash player in Canada. Boo! No, I'm just kidding. I, that was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. I like Smash. I'm kidding. Well, hold on. Hold on. We, we have the best Kazuya player in the world, Riddles. 
So my question to you, because we're losing players because of Kazuya, are you happy with it? And how do you feel about Kazuya being so broken? Yes. <laughs> Ask Sakurai-san. Oh. Ah, yo, shout out to Sakurai-san, no. But Thank for real, you. Steve, one day I woke up and Twitter was going crazy with Kazuya. And I was like, what, did something happen with our game? And it wasn't me, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, one of my favorite things in the world is watching Smash. This is the only reason I watch Smash tournaments is to watch people complain about Kazuya. <laughs> and it is the greatest thing at bro. They're like, this so what is a god fist anyway? I'm like, man, these guys <laughs> getting destroyed. I was a young child, but I was a young child. Papa no say nanja nee kat tete. Shougakusei kara mecha mecha yuwareru. He said his, uh, he's got two daughters and uh, one of them's in elementary school. You know, a lot of Smash Brothers play in elementary school. And uh, <laughs> I saw what you did there. Go on. <laughs> and uh, they were giving her so much crap about how Kazuya was in the game and it's her dad's fault. So. De, ta, tashka ni kaihatsu shite ru no. So, but Harada's like, you know, well, it is the people working for me who actually make that game. Uh, I don't know if you all know, but Smash Brothers is made by Ben and Emko Studio. So, but it's still not my fault. There's this evil man out there named Sakurai. You should look I've it seen up. him. He's a very evil man. He puts these characters in games just to terrorize the local fan base. It's crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank no you. problem. No problem. You're not going to come to Tokyo anytime soon? So, September. 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 I uh, plan to be in Tokyo, Tokyo Game Show. Tokyo Game Show. I've never been. Mark always oh, really? talks. What? I've never. Well, first time. I, first time. Okay. So, I want to go. Oh, and I'm a big Master gamer. Cup, but never yeah, I went to oh, Master okay. Cup. No Japan. No uh, Tokyo Game Show. So, I want to come in September. And hopefully, we can hang out and go go to TGS and have a whole. I want to go to the Horatos Bar in Japan. Okay. That was good. good. Yeah. That's good that idea. Okay. Look, I mean, look, I'm going to talk to Sony about getting some of these new monitors and headphones. I'm going to Harada's bar with Harada. Okay. And I get to try some of that taco, the takoyaki, though. So that's what oh, I'm yeah, really... Yeah, yeah. I heard that takoyaki is actually OD good, like mad good. So, Also, the voice of Akuma? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the, so I don't know if y'all know this. So if you have not watched Harada's bar, like it actually happens in a bar and they make god like takoyaki while they're there. But the person who prepares the takoyaki is the voice actor for Akuma in Street Fighter. So it's 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 actually crazy. And also I remember the first time I heard the the Akuma voice. Dude, we were in we were in Japan and they surprised us by bringing him out on stage yeah. and I just started yelling the whole time. It was crazy like over a quiet crowd. It was crazy. But you know, I'm a bit concerned. We're going to have to the studio for Harada's bar is, is pretty small. We're yes. going to have to Steve proof it. I you got to Steve proof it. It's like, you know, you have to have a child proof career. Yeah. You have to have a Steve proof set because I will tear that bad boy up if I get too excited, bro. Yo, thank you for having yeah. me so much. You guys know I'm a big fan thank of what you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, guys, do me a favor. I need y'all to do me a favor because I don't really get to do this. I know you guys rock with Tekken. I know you rock with Harada and Michael Murray. But can y'all please make as much noise as possible for Harada and Michael Murray out there, please.